Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU's military structures, state of play and future prospects. European Union subsidies to Greece will pour in. Why the European Union should agree to disagree on genetically modified organisms. And the ECA, at least 1 billion euros of European Union aid to the Democratic Republic of Congo has been wasted. Plus, real, very serious problems will begin in the EU in one and a half to two years' time. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The EU's strong attachment to a comprehensive approach to crisis management, integrating a wide spectrum of diplomatic, economic development and, in the last resort, military means, is noted by the report. But the recent military operations in both Libya and Mali have demonstrated the lack of progress towards a truly common security and defence policy, and emphasis it emphasises the need for more coordination and cooperation at the European level. Now, moving the common security and defence policy to a new level, the report encourages EU member states to progress towards creating a permanent structured cooperation. And this cooperation should include the establishment of a permanent European Union operational headquarters, the common funding of a rapid reaction operations using European Union battle groups, a commitment to contribute to the battle group roster with aligned rules of engagement and streamlined decision-making procedures. So, there you have it, folks. It's in black and white and on record in our legislation section. The report is calling for the assembling of a Euro military, a supranational conglomeration of defence forces. Although much of the money goes unused because of bureaucratic snaffers and incompetence, Greece still is set to receive a record 7.5 billion euros in European Union subsidies, despite criticism over how the monies have been used, including fraudulently. Development Minister Kostis Hazidakis, while in Brussels, reported also that projects not accepted into the current programme would be incorporated into the new funding programme for 2014 to 2020, with the prospect of immediate absorption. Well, the Greek people will be up in arms when they see this. The plight is tragic. Welfare removed, jobs removed, many homeless and hungry. And the EU pulling at the tripwires in its economic web. Ultimately, we know that the bailout monies are not going to the people of Greece, they're going to the banks via the Greek government to service bond shareholders. The demand to transfer powers from the EU back to the national level is politically on vogue in several EU member states at the moment. EU policy on agricultural biotechnology, however, is an interesting exception, writes Maria Weimer. The Council of Ministers has recently become deadlocked over a Commission legislative proposal to re-nationalise parts of EU legislation on the cultivation of genetically modified organisms. According to the 2012 Danish EU Presidency Progress Report, a political agreement on the GMO dossier is not possible. Now, the proposed legislation would grant member states the right to restrict or prohibit GMO cultivation in their territory. Earlier this year, the Commission ratcheted up pressure by announcing a freeze of all pending EU authorisations of GMO cultivation until council members reached an agreement. It is indeed high time to complete this reform process and to agree to disagree on GMO cultivation in Europe. Well, we will be discussing GMO and genetic engineering in our live show Critical Thinking later in November, and we have invited Maria Weimer, who is Assistant Professor in EU Law at the Law Faculty of the University of Amsterdam and a Senior Research Fellow at the Amsterdam Centre for European Law and Governance, to join us as a member on the panel. On the 1st of October, in Luxembourg, the European Court of Auditors published Special Report No. 9 2013, entitled EU Support for Governance in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
At the press conference, Hans Gustav Weisberg, a member of the Court of Auditors, announced that they had investigated 1.9 billion euros worth of aid given to DRC between 2003 and 2011, which had been allocated to 16 projects in the vastly troubled country. Mr. Weisberg said fewer than half of the programmes examined have delivered or are likely to deliver most of the expected results and that even those projects which hit targets are likely to vanish without trace as sustainability is unrealistic prospect in most cases. Well, here's another example of the EU pouring European taxpayers' cash into the African abyss. In the article, one example of the vanishing funds is the training of and equipping of 1,000 new police officers that have suddenly disappeared without trace. The EU is faced with a potential crisis in the next one and a half years. There are four possible scenarios. The formation of a union around Germany or a union around Germany and France. The collapse of the EU in individual countries and then a subsequent war between them. The blossoming of the EU with possible accessions of Algeria, Ukraine, Syria and other countries. In this case, the fate of the EU is not discussed by its leadership. Now, in crisis, the natural geo-economic clusters that exist within the EU will be merged and Europe might fall apart into two clusters, the Roman Empire and the protesting core. It's interesting, Michael Kazin talks in this article of the possible scenarios, but only gives glancing lip service to the word crisis. So what crisis is he referring to? Well, we believe the crisis is a financial one. The problems from 2008 have not been dealt with. The politicians have simply kicked the can down the road. And as Mr Kazin says, the crisis processes in the EU will be accelerated and in the next one and a half to two years, very serious problems will begin for the European Union. Today in our video library, Feedback from our rather technically encumbered show, Critical Thinking, has come in and it turns out there is much interest in the subject matter. Based upon our series Brave New Europe, which is available in the articles sections of our website. Now, I talked on the show about the relevance of Foreign and Commonwealth Office Document 301048 and Sarah Mitchell emailed in to ask, where is the evidence for the transfer of powers that you talked about? Well, Sarah, that's a great question, and it's one that needs to be asked much more frequently, because any position can only remain tenable whilst there is evidence to support it. So for today's video pick, I wanted to highlight a programme we put together in studio for the InfoWars Operation Paul Revere contest, and which placed in the top 25%. The video entitled Betrayed, and presented by Trevor Coleman, MEP and myself, provides a full dossier of evidence that shows how the British people have been deceived over the last 40 years into handing over sovereignty and governance to the unelected Eurocrats in the EU Commission. Now I have linked directly to the film on our YouTube channel, so you can post comments and subscribe to the channel too if you wish. I hope you enjoy the film. I'm Rick Timmis. Reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.